Привет всем! Окей, мы будем смотреть на Звезда Херкулес. Два-пар ревью. Этот первый видео будет смотреть на кит. Я буду смотреть на второй видео, которое будет смотреть на все эти экстрасы. Потому что они могут или не могут быть релевантны для вас. Окей, я сделаю все эти вещи. Мы будем смотреть на них в отдельном видео. Окей, что у нас есть? У нас есть C-138 американский вонёр транспортный самолет, окей? Uh, notice that they haven't used the word Hercules at all on the box, and I think I know why. Uh, this was a pre-order from Armour Models in Moscow, and that's why I've got all those extra pieces to look at. Only just arrived, there was a bit of a delay in the shipment. Uh, box art is depicting the um, Air National Guard C-130, Of course, they should have depicted the RAF Hercules, but we'll forgive them that. Anyways, very long anticipated kit uh, for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, Hercules 172 scale. Um, big interest in this aircraft myself. Um, you may well know I was in the British Army and we deployed in these uh, full military descent into Sarajevo, um, tactical aircraft. Uh, incredible and probably a little bit more for me as well the last time i made one of these was the airfix one in like i don't know 1979 or so i don't know when but i can remember having the airfix one as a kid and i used to leave the cargo ramp open and throw dinky toys inside it was never paid anyways let's uh, leave the sentimentality the um the thing here is with zvezda as well of course russian manufacturer They're breaking new ground here. Um, the reputation of the brand is just growing and growing. People know that the days of old are gone and that their own tooled kits are pretty much spot on. And we've seen quite a few releases, obviously, of uh, Russell Soviet aircraft. This is the first time we see really an aircraft that has got obviously no relationship at all to Warsaw Pack or Soviet. This is purely like this was the NATO workhorse. Um, the other thing as well about this kit as well, it's like a three in one. There's three versions of this kit. It's not really made out that way. Um, what they tell you about is the decal options. So on the box, um, the call outs are um, Zvezda and Tamiya. Every time they always do that, um, that's just the way that they are. Uh, interesting thing, if you look at their 1 to 144 aircraft kits, you'll see, and quite a few of their military kits, they have got some, um, they've got branding and licensing, uh, usually in cooperation with like Boeing, etc., and, you know, MIG, etc. So I'm sure that they, they probably did seek out licensing, were unable to obtain it or whatever. So I think that's why we don't see Hercules on the box. It doesn't make any difference. We know where it is. Um, there's pictures of the built-up model here. Um, that's it. That's for, in terms of sort of basic information, 314 parts. Uh, for me, great price, 2,900 rubles. So we're talking about um, 30 uh, pounds sterling. Uh, and I've seen the price in Hannett's. They're asking for 45 pounds for this kit. Uh, I hope you guys can get a good deal. deal. I, I don't know what the US retail price is. Um, hopefully it somewhere equates to what Zvezda is selling these for in Russia. Um, I think... Um, You know, 30 pounds, about, you know, uh, about 30 dollars for a kit of this size, I think is a really, really good deal. Anyways, let's do our usual. Let's open it up. They've changed the boxes, uh, Zvezda. You used to have a box in a box. Now you've got a big opening up box, which is great, actually. This is um, something I haven't seen in ages, but this sort of, <laughs> this is the way I used to build kits. You know, I think you, you probably all can remember. Um, What you used to do was build up the kit and then sort of do a bit and then put it back inside the box and close the lid. This is a really, really good solution. Anyways, enough of that. Let's see what's inside. Okay, first of all, a color sheet with the markings, the instructions. And then in terms of bags of sprue, and we'll just get them all out and I'll show them to you. One, two, 
three bags. And in addition to that, one really big, um, like A4 sized uh, decal sheet, another decal sheet inside a protective Ziploc bag, and of course the transparent sprues. So let's open these up and I'll show you in detail what you've got inside. And also let's have a look at the instructions. Okay, let's start off with the meat and bones of the review. I'm gonna start off with actually the um, color paint guide. Um, okay, first of all, we've already mentioned that the color callouts are in Tamaya Zvezda. Obviously, as a builder of aircraft with some experience, do your own research on colors, etc. Um, regardless, anyways. The thing I'm gonna point out here is the versions. We've got the USAF, it's a C130H. The Polish one is a C130H, um, for, uh, C130E, uh, modernized C130H. Another C-130H, another C-130H, the Japanese Air Force and the Korean Air Force ones. And finally, we've got the C-130K. So this is actually a three and one kit. There's enough um, parts uh, to allow for three different versions of the Hercules. That's quite important. Um, Zvezda haven't really blown that up that much. But they are actually, you know, the genuine standalone aircraft, um, you know, or versions of the Hercules. Um, and that will come into the construction. So the first thing that you would do is decide which aircraft you're going to build. Basically, you know, the E, H or the K. And then you would follow the steps. Um, on typical of Zvezda, they usually sort of show you like a couple of versions to build it as like usually one on the ground, one flying. They've um, dispensed with that on these instructions. And we've got the typical parts map layout. Uh, we'll go through all these sprues. First step is building the uh, flight deck. And there's all bits and pieces going inside there. It looks like it's got quite a, uh, you know, a good representation of a flight deck in 72 scale. And it's got a call out for deck or so. Um, we'll have a look at those parts, but I imagine that most of the the detail is affected by decals, not by um, you know parts with any relief or anything. But we'll have a look. Uh, notably, we've got um, crew figures, which is pretty typical for Zvezda. They do include crew, crew figures. Um, be nice to maybe have a few more, like a loadmaster in the back. But uh, you've got a flight crew there, which is kudos to them. Um, after the flight deck's built up, we start building up the rear cargo area and the bulkheads. Those guys go on together, and this is where you get your first call out for versions because there's different configurations on the fuselage, be it a door, be it two portholes. Now, um, quite a lot of detail gets added on the inside surfaces, so some of this is covering up the internal portion and some of the inside of that fuselage is going to be well, sort of seen from inside as it were and lots and lots of different references here for the different versions again so what i do is i tend to if i've got a version in mind i'll circle it and i'll make sure that i don't um you know miss follow a step or i certainly hope i don't miss follow a step but um, by having all these different versions, it really allows a lot of variation and uh, modification for people that want to do their own thing with this kit, which really, really is good. Um, inside, again, more and more details going on. There's the actual stretcher fitment going on there in a stowed position. So it's got that. Um, but inside the back of the Hercules, if you've been inside one, they're pretty bare bones, uh, not very comfortable. They've sort of got like netted um, uh, seats and anything. None of that's depicted whatsoever. It's just a bare cargo ramp. There's no seating configuration, but they have got some of the equipment. And inside the back of here, there's basically, when you're inside the back, there's just some acoustic quilting and you see all the guts of the aircraft. So they've made a representation of that with some bits because the roof there has got all the... Um, you know, lines running through it. You see all that when you're inside the back of the thing. 
this is interesting here um it's telling you to remove a portion and it's like short it tells you there to remove a part there and remove a part here now what interests me here is does that mean that there's going to be a stretch version coming out uh, later on or something similar because you see this part here gets deleted and removed but it's actually a longer component so that it um, I would like you guys to come back in the comments because you probably know a lot more about Hercules than I do but I'm wondering have they got the stretch version coming out and they've got these parts longer to allow for um, the stretch version Hercules maybe who knows okay more and more internal detail going on um, the fuselage window started getting fitted, fitted in here's all these different fairings there's so many um, variant points here so just pay attention to them when you're building it uh, finally by 25 we're getting the fuselage coming together I think points to note here is that um, instead of a big box section going inside the fuselage it's a mixture of the upper and lower cargo ramp and then detail on the inside of the fuselage so we'll look closely at both sides of the fuselage when we look at the parts here's the wing the wings made all in one section which uh, to me it seems pretty good because that way you're going to get the thing uh, totally lined up pretty well and then you can just slot it on top so the spar section uh, port and sideboard uh, port and starboard wings all go on make sure you make your holes for uh, the attachment points for the external fuel tanks here are the uh, Allison turbo prop engines They've got some detail in them, like the exhaust and bits and pieces. They look pretty good. I mean, in the instructions, they look good. Look at the parts. Uh, all these bits go on the engines here. More call-outs for different versions. It looks like they've really, I'm hoping, and it seems if they've really researched these versions out, um, that's what the instructions are sort of pointing at, as if they've looked at every aspect even the like beaver tail and the sort of standard tail that all seems to be depicted here um 36 you've got the whole thing coming together really got the uh the wing going on top uh three types of noses uh it's telling you to put in nose weight here which is uh, a good thing because i remember some versions i think they use the cargo ramp to sort of prop it up Here's the landing gear. The landing gear on the instructions show it being flattened. Uh, we'll check that out. And there's some detail getting added onto that nose landing gear there. Uh, there's no call outs to show it in the gear up configuration, but you may or may not be able to do that with, you know, without with simple conversion. Here's the rear um, cargo or the loading ramp. There, getting out some parts. So you've got basically two versions atypical of course showing the um, cargo ramp deployed out or up and also the um the step the uh rear sorry the front entry point of the cabin here is shown either in two versions so you got you need to make your, your choice down here um if you're going to do the steps uh, showing for entry or simply up. This is the crucial point here for the RAF version, the in-flight refueling probe. They've got that. And then we've got a call out for the, um, some of the technical um, markings, uh, wing walkway points and bits and pieces. Let's have a look at the parts now. Let's get the big bits out. Fuselage. Fuselage, uh, points to note, everything's on there basically, uh, right from the front from the off. So the tail is integral. And uh, this is where the Zvezda quality sort of shines through. Look at the very, very fine panel lining and detailing. It looks, uh, it looks really good. They don't lose any of the detail as you come round to any of the um, the dorsal portion of the aircraft either. So they've got it throughout. 
There is no riveting depicted. Um, that's going to be debatable uh, for a 72 scale aircraft. You can do it, definitely. Now, Zvezda make their kits in Russia and uh, currently they don't depict any, on any of their kits, any riveting being 48 scale where it was a bit of a letdown with the, uh, the hind, obviously. But um, the reason that they're, they're not doing that is to keep the cost down low. The, the, the mold costs increase, you know, by a fair amount if you incorporate riveting in your molds. So there's ways to do that. Um, you can roll your wheel across, but this is the way it comes. Uh, in 72 scale, it's sort of debatable if you see it or not, but um, that's what you get. Uh, but you have got some of the detail of the main landing gear, as in structure, there's no like bits and pieces in there. Bearing in mind there's a big fairing that covers that, at least they've uh, depicted uh, detail of um, spars and structure within there, which is good to see. And here's part of the air refueling system for the RAF uh, version up there. No warpage, nothing like that. Inside of the fuselage is quite important because some of this detail will show. And um, I can see sort of like some knockout marks on the lower area. It looks like they've actually thought about it. You can see them there, 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 there and there. The cargo decks there, you probably see that one. But bearing in mind that your viewpoint will be from the back here, how much of that are you going to see? It's going to be very little. But um, they have got the ribbing depicted here inside the tail. They've got knockout marks in there. That would be difficult to get out if you're that way inclined. But in reality, on the real aircraft, there's lots of detail going through there. So if you're going to detail the aircraft, you're going to add in quite a bit in there. But... Uh, it looks pretty good, everything's straight and true, and it's a nice big aircraft. Let's have a look at the other parts. Here are the wings, upper and these are uh, upper, and, upper and lower, port and starboard, uh, you know, nearly identical sprues, mirror sprues. Um, and here are the stretchers here as well for the uh, cargo compartment. Um, this again we've got the really fine panel lining looks excellent the control services are molded integrally however you have got space there for the nav lights that are going to be in transparent parts uh, one thing I noticed here is that the actual surface here is extremely smooth on one on one part of the the dorsal portion of, of the of the wing or oh, actually no that's the upper portion uh, and the uh, lower portion, where the engine's mount, there's a little bit of texture on there, but it's, it's like minimal. Just, just one of those things. Um, doesn't uh, mean anything detrimental. Um, yeah, there's just going to be, you're just going to get your glue line across there. These are big wings, obviously. Uh, we'll have a look at the... Two sprues identical, we just need to look at one of them. These are the engine details. Um, so like the engine exhaust, the spinners, the spinners look really good. They've got the, they're actually, you know, hollowed out where they should be. And then um, the blades themselves, I really like this. The blades are really thin, like ultra thin, sharp, got the correct profile. They look really good. Um, you need to make sure that you align them properly However, that's pretty simple because as you can see on the spinner, they've got the correct sort of location on how they get placed in. So I quite like that personally, that you've got really detailed um, and in scale profiles for your propellers. These are the uh, engine nacelles. Uh, again, like really nice tight detail. They've got some ducting depicted in there. They just look really, really good, like tight. You know, the details are tight, sharp. In fact, this is so fine here, uh, you don't want to lose it. So um, hopefully the wash picks that up. But I think in some places you may want to deepen out 
the panel lines. They're that subtle. Reminds me of their uh, one to one four four scale um, jetliner kits. Big sprue here. Uh, the three noses, the three distinctive Herky Bird noses. I hope these. Uh, I hope this. I hope they've got the shape right. It's important for aircraft as well. There's a, you know, there's quite a lot of critique that you get um, for aircraft. If they get the shape wrong, it does matter. And um, well, to me, that looks like a Herky nose. But um, you know, people study the profiles, etc. And I'm sort of hoping that they've got it right. It certainly looks right to me but uh, I'm not an expert by any means. Uh, the external fuel tanks, got them on. These things are always fitted. You've got the flight crew there. These are multi-part flight crew, as per the instructions. And there's even a guy wearing his shades. He must be the, uh, he must be the skipper, eh? Shame they haven't got the loadmaster, but maybe we can, I'm sure there's some extra figures that come out for that. Uh, this is the front landing gear here, and uh, I'm sort of I'm a bit worried about the hopefully there's enough purchase there. Everything it's good, everything's in scale and like the scissor link there looks really good. Um but that's gonna be uh that's gonna has to be strong because of the weight that's gonna be on it. Just various detail components on there, including the optional like the two options between the different um fairings. And they've got the DACA, I think that's what they're called, these um, for the uh, heat exchangers, uh, so they can take, um, extract hot air from cooling various electronic components. But uh, another great looking sprue. Okay, we've got the uh, rest of the empennage, so we've got the uh, rear um, stabilizers, and this is the spar section of the wing. And as long as that, that join, you know, fits snugly into the fuselage, um, everything's good. Now, yeah, as, it, as per the instructions, you can see that the, the wheels are depicted with weight on them. So they're like bulged and flattened outwards. Um, some people like that, some people don't. Um, for me, well... Doesn't, doesn't really hurt me one way or the other to be honest um, but that's that's what they've shown and to be fair I mean the Hercules when has got a fair bit, bit of weight these are low pressure tyres so you know you could say that that looks good or maybe you can go for some aftermarket ones as you'll see in the next video and also they've got the same depiction on the nose gear as well but they, they look pretty good off the bat they look pretty good here's some of these optional um, Either the um, port there, the windows, two windows, or the hatch there. Final big sprue. Okay, we've got the cargo deck there. It's got some depiction of the... Uh, like the load hull down eyelets, you know, they've got all these, they need all these points here where they can um, attach cargo. Uh, but as noted in the instructions, there is no seating depicted or included within the kit. And there's that part that gets modified, that gets shortened down, and another part gets shortened down. Uh, yeah, I think they, you know, they go towards depicting some of the detail in that roof section. What's sort of uh, a little bit amusing here, this is the uh, depiction of the quilting of the uh, attenuation, um, noise suppression sort of quilting to sort of try and make it comfortable in the back of Hercules. Believe me, if you've been in the back of Hercules, not comfortable. Anyways, um, the quilting looks uh, like geometric shapes, doesn't look that convincing. But then again, can you see it? I'm not really nitpicking here. I'm just sort of pointing stuff out. But uh, I've, I've got no complaints actually about what I've seen so far. It looks very impressive to me. Uh, also note that, you know, you've got all these fine details, little components, nothing whatsoever is broken off the tree. There's no flash on it. Everything is as it should be, uh, which is what you want in a model kit. Kind of disheartening to get 
you know, to, to pay for a model kit and then find pieces um, that have been broken off sprues. Not in this case. And I do like the new, uh, I do like the new boxing. Right, okay. Um, final sprue is the transparent parts. Uh, points to note, this is the way that Zvezda do their transparent parts. It's flexible. Uh, a flexible transparent plastic and even I'll show you on the windscreen here you can actually you know flex it inwards not a bad thing because it's perfectly crystal clear and um, as long as this this allows you to actually get this to fit you know pretty much bob on by adjusting um, how this fits inside the fuselage so it's it's quite a good feature and everything does look really tight, everything's shiny, there's no, there's nothing detrimental. Another advantage as well is you're very unlikely to uh, snap these components unless you sort of sit on them or, you know, whatever, have another mishap. But everything seems to be depicted, including sort of like nav lights and bits and pieces like that, the portholes. So that's our final sprue. No photo etch whatsoever, it's a Vesda, which um, I think is a good thing, to be honest. Uh, here's our nice colour decal sheet. Um, points to note are the uh, rather awesome um, Viz Fat Slags, uh, you know, graffiti nose art that was put on the RAF Hercules, and that was a Gulf War um, edition, but they show the camo version. Everything else looks good the Japanese, the Korean. Polish markings and in particular this US flag looks really good looks really tight the colors colors for the RF roundels look good uh, and also let's point that out because this is what our um, flight deck the instruments are really quite well depicted on that decal and that's more than sufficient for uh, you know 172 scale and bearing in mind you can you you won't be able to see it so one more thing to look at is the huge A3 decal. Why is it so big? It's so big because it's got all of these uh, walkway markings that cover the wings and also the upper portion of the fuselage. Now, if I, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but this whole thing, it's not a single line here. This is one big piece of carrier film. Now, uh, I think it's a pretty good idea because if, um, you, you know, to put on those lines, if you're not that experienced, it's easier to do it with one big piece of deco film. Disadvantages, of course, is that you can get air bubbles trapped in it. For me, I don't see this as an issue because they're big straight lines. What I will do is use this as a template and basically paint on these uh, walkways uh, the yellow, I believe, is for the RAF one. And they're all square lines. And what I would do is basically, yeah, use, yeah, I'd use the circles uh, where, where they're needed. And I'd just mask off this and paint this yellow. That's the way I would do it anyways. But, I mean, they've depicted it. Uh, you've got the, R the US Air Force um, stars and bars there. Um, yeah, everything looks good. Right, okay, that rounds off the review of this Zvezda Hercules. Make sure you check out the other video if you're interested in some of the aftermarket components that are currently available via Armour Models. And see you shortly. We will be building this one quite shortly, I think. Take it easy, guys, and see you soon.